Hi there. I am feeling so much better. I still don't have the um, stamina and the longevity that I need to be able to do back-to-back -back readings. Um, so I think today is June 12th and I still have not done June 3rd through today. So what I think that I'm going to do is that I'm going to start f today, June 12th, and read June 12th, and then go on the current day so I catch up for you guys. And then I'm going to, when I have extra energy to go back and do um, June 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, I know that's going backwards, and I really didn't want to do that, but I'm falling further and further behind and um, I want to catch up, so I don't know if y'all want to do that or not, but I'm going to read today's June 12th today and um, go from there. So what are your top three priorities today? What's on your schedule to-do list today? What do you want to remember from, from today, June 12th, 2022? What are your reflections on our Bible reading after we read our Bible? And how are you doing on your healthy journey? Today, we are going to read 1 Kings 8, 1 through 53, John 19, 25 through 42, Psalm 92, 1 through 9. Now the Lord has kept his promise, which he made. For I have taken my father David's place and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised. And I have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. 1 Kings 20, 8, 20. Blah. First Kings 820. What an undertaking building that temple was. Today on earth, building a temple is just as difficult an undertaking because we are the temple. Talking about our healthy journey and um, nourishing our temple, our body. The struggle to maintain, uplift, and nurture self, let alone a family, to follow the Lord's teaching is what every modern-day Solomon strives for. Lord, help us remember God's promise of redemption. Help us to build our temples on the rock. Amen. So let's get started because you, as you can um, hear, I'm still not 100%, but I'm so much better. So I want to go ahead and get to today's reading going. <clears throat> I have my trusty water in case I need to stop and um, lube up the pipes. So I read oh, thoroughly and uh, clearly. Okay, now all my markers are off because I'm on June 3rd. So 1 Kings uh, 8, 1 through 53. Okay, then King, King Solomon summoned into his presence at Jerusalem the elders of Israel, all the heads of the tribes and the chiefs of the Israelite family to bring up the Ark of the Lord's Covenant from Zion, the city of David. All the men of Israel came together to King Solomon at the time of the festival in the month of Ethanim, the seventh month. Ethanim might be. Ethanim might be the proper pronunciation. And that just reminded me, we need to start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this opportunity to get into your word. Thank you for health. Thank you for wealth. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for your son who died on the cross for our sins. Be with our loved ones, wherever they may be. Holy Spirit, we invite you in to do what only you can do. Show us your ways. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 
Verse 3, when all the elders of Israel had arrived, the priests took up the ark and they brought up the ark of the Lord and at the tent of meeting and all the sacred furnish, furnishings in it. The priests and the Levites carried them up the, and King Solomon and the entire assembly of Israel that had gathered about him were before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and cattle that they could not be recorded or counted. The priest then brought the Ark of the Lord's Covenant to its place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, and put it beneath the wings of the cher cherubim. The cherubim spread their wings over the place of the Ark and overshadowed the Ark and its carrying poles. These poles were so long that their ends could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but not from the outside of the holy place. And they are still there today. There was nothing in the ark except the two stone tablets that Moses had placed in it at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites after they came out of Egypt. When the priests withdrew from the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord. And the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled his temple. Then Solomon said, the Lord has said that he would dwell in a dark cloud. I have indeed built a magnificent temple for you, a place for you to dwell forever. While the whole assembly of Israel was standing there, the king turned around and blessed them. Then he said, praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who with his own hand has fulfilled what he promised with his own mouth to my father, David. For he said, since the day I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I have not chosen a city in any tribe of Israel to have a temple built for my name to be there, but I have chosen David to rule my people Israel. <clears throat> For my father David had it in his heart to build a temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, because it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well to have this in your heart. Nevertheless, you are not the one to build a temple, but your son, who is your own flesh and blood. He is the one who will build the temple for my name. The Lord has kept the promise he made. I have succeeded David, my father, and now I sit on the throne of Israel, just as the Lord promised, and I have built the temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. I have provided a place there for the ark, in which is the covenant of the Lord that he made with our fathers when he brought them out of Egypt. Verse 22 but then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel, spread out his hands toward heaven and said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven, above or on earth, below. You who keep your covenant of love with your servants who continue wholeheartedly in your way. You have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. With your mouth you have promised, and with your hand you have fulfilled it, as it is today. Now, Lord, God of Israel, keep your servant David, my father, the promise you made, promises you made to him when you said, You shall never fail to have a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel. If only your sons are careful in all they do to walk before me as you have done. And now, O God of Israel, let your word that you promised your servant David, my father, come true. But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Yet give attention to your servant's prayer and his belief plea for mercy. O Lord, my God, hear the cry and the prayer of your servant is praying in your presence this day. 
May your eyes be open toward this temple night and day, this place of which you said, my name shall be there, so that you will hear the prayer your servant prays toward this place. Hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place. And when you hear, forgive. Verse 31, when a man wrongs his neighbor and is required to take an oath and he comes and swears the oath before your altar in this temple, then hear from heaven and act, judge between your servants, condemning the guilty and bringing down on his own head what he has done. Declare the innocent not guilty and so establish his innocence. When your people Israel have been defeated by an enemy because they have sinned against you, and when they turn back to you and confess confess your name, praying and making supplication to you in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land you gave to their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you. And when you pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you have afflicted them. Then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel. Teach them the right way to live and send rain on the land you gave your people for an inheritance. When famine or plague comes to the land, or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, or when an enemy besieges them in any of their cities, whatever disaster or disease may come, and when a prayer or plea is made by any of your people Israel, each one aware of the afflictions in his own heart and spreading out his hand toward his temple, Then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Forgive the act. Forgive an act. Deal with each man according to all he does, since you know his heart. For you know alone, for you alone know the hearts of all men. So that they will fear you all the time that they live in the land you gave our fathers. As for the foreigner who does not belong to your people Israel, but has come from a distant land because of your name. For men will hear of your great name and your mighty hand. And your outstretched arm when he comes and prays toward his temple. Then hear from heaven your dwelling place and do whatever the foreigner asks of you. So that... All the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your own people Israel, and may know that this house I have built bears your name. When your people go to war against their enemies, whenever wherever you send them, and when they pray to the Lord toward the city you have chosen, and the temple I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayers and their plea and uphold their cause. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them and give them over to the enemy, who takes them captive to his own land, far away or near, and if they have a change of heart in the land where they are held captive, and repent and plead with you in the land of their conquerors and say, We have sinned, we have done wrong, we have acted wickedly, and if they turn back to you with all their heart and soul in the land of their enemies who took them captive and pray to you toward the land you gave their fathers, toward the city you have chosen, and the temple I have built for your name. Then from heaven your dwelling place, hear their prayer and their plea, and uphold their cause, and forgive your people." Who have sinned against you, forgive all the offenses they have committed against you, and cause their conquerors to show them mercy. For they your people and for they are your people and your inheritance, 
whom you brought out of Egypt, out of that iron smelting furnace. <clears throat> may your eyes be open to your servant's plea and to the plea of your people Israel, and may you listen to them whenever they cry out to you. For you singled them out from all the nations of the world to be your own inheritance, just as you declared through your servant Moses when you, O sovereign Lord, brought our fathers out of Egypt. Amen. Put that there. Hmm. John nineteen twenty five through forty two. John nineteen twenty five through forty two. Don't ask me why I'm yawning. I have no idea. I have not been yawning all day. <coughs> twenty five through forty two. Twenty five through. That finishes John at twenty. John nineteen twenty five through forty two. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciples, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. <clears throat> Later, knowing that all was now completed and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation and the next day, was to be a special Sabbath because the Jews did not want the bodies left on the, cr the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on and one that they have on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews. While Pilate's permission with Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Amen. <clears throat> uh. 
Psalm 92, 1 through 9. Psalm 92, 1 through 9. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad to be for you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. How great are your works, O Lord. How profound your thoughts. The senseless man does not know. Fools do not understand that though the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be forever destroyed. But you, O Lord, are exalted forever. For surely your enemies, O Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. Amen. Okay, that concludes our reading for June 12th, 2022. Oh, I feel overwhelmed with everything that I have to catch up on. But we will catch up. And in the meantime, I think that I'm going to be be doing that day for you guys so you can stay on track and then as you want to catch up if you've skipped um the days that I have not posted and then want to go back I will post them but our uh, videos will be out of order now so that'll drive me a little bonkers but it is what it is um I struggled with, I mean, we're only 22 minutes in, and I've struggled a little bit with this reading today. So um, I'm going to do my best, and um, we will catch up, and we will read through the Bible in a year. I appreciate you coming along with me. I hope that you have a blessed day, and I hope that you have many opportunities to bless other people. I'll see you tomorrow.